What's up, guys? The red light is on. I'm so pumped and happy to have her back on. We've talked on an IG. we talked a couple of times. Maddie Levine, how are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to be back on Fight Bananas. What is happening, David? You know, uh, you know, nothing's happening, right? Nothing's going on right now on MMA. You know, whatever. I don't <laughs> Absolutely know. nothing. Yeah, whatever. I'm Only so excited. Only a huge excited. card. This is going to be I, so good. I'm ready. Like, I'm so ready for this. We're getting towards the end of the week. Kind of, it's crazy too, because there's so much content going on. I see you doing stuff for CES. You know, I'm doing yep. stuff for Icon. I'm at PFL tomorrow night in Orlando. So, so much is going on. There's a UFC every freaking week, which is amazing. But there's a lot going on. I'm like, I finally got to a point now. That's it. Nothing else matters. UFC 272, Masvidal Covington. I'm ready. Like, that's us I'm, I'm so ready. ready. And, like, the buzz has been insane, which yep. almost makes me nervous because I'm like, this better live up to the hype. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of yeah. those cards where it's like, there's been a lot of talk about this one. But, I mean, the lineup is crazy. I, yeah. I don't think there's any way that this won't be an exciting fight or an exciting lineup. Totally agree. Before we go into it, I'm ready. I'm about to say, Jorge, I'm about to give you the runway. I want you, you first, YouTube channel, po you know, podcast interviews. Take it away. You, this this minute is the Maddie minute. Take it away. Ooh, okay. A minute with Maddie. Yes. Love it for me. Um, Go find uh, me at the One Two Punch. I just started a brand new YouTube channel and I'm really excited about it. It's getting a lot of love so far. A lot of great fight fans have found the page and you can find it at the One Two Punch with Maddie Levine. So that's exciting. Make sure you find me on Instagram, on Twitter, at Maddie Levine. We're always talking the fight game. And Sprinkle in a little other stuff too. You know, we try to stay well rounded, but let's be friends and let's talk about the fight game together. There we go. All right, minutes up. We paid the bills, the checks in the mail, Maddie. All right. <laughs> Excellent. I'll be waiting. All right, here we go. All right, UFC 272. Uh, there's not a lot of pay per views that has a main event without a title involved. Usually, if it happens, it's a Conor McGregor, Jorge, Gamebred, Masvidal. This card's about him. Like, this is the Jorge card. Uh, not a lot of fighters. Like, I don't know if him versus Leon is big enough for a pay-per-view main event. They were going to be on a pay-per-view a couple months ago. It wasn't the main event. Uh, I would assume a Connor versus Jorge or a Covington versus Jorge with all the bad blood. So this is why we got this main event and it's uh, living up. It's actually, to me, it's like a little bit surpassing what I thought this was going to be. And we're hours away from like the big media day. We're, you know, a day away from the, uh, you know, the not the press conference, like the weigh-ins in the front weigh of people. Yeah. I can't wait. When like, they this finally is square get, up. Yeah, like we think we're excited now. Give us 24 more hours. I really want to dive all into it. What do you think about the buzz, the feeling? What do you think about the fight itself? What do you think about after the fight? Who wins? What's going to happen? I'll, I'll give you the runway I and mean, then I'll dive in. You know, this one's, this one's tricky. Um, I'll be honest with you. I can't stand listening to any of the press anymore because it's just like uh, – you know, Wait, the media side of it or just them? them talking to each okay. other. It's okay. no longer about who's more talented. It's about who's yeah. the shittier person. It's you. No, it's you. No, it's you. And, you know, there comes a moment and the moment is coming on yeah. Saturday where it doesn't matter what you say about each other. As soon as that cage closes, it comes down to the nitty gritty. It comes down yeah. to the talent and Covington's loud mouth can no longer be running. Okay. And I'm really excited to see who's able to shut off their mental roller coaster that they've put each other on. Right. And I think Masvidal definitely has the upper hand when it comes to uh, mental strength and being able to stay focused. Yep. He has the upper hand when it comes to striking, I feel like. I think Covington is going to give him a problem on the ground, possibly. And I think just the forward pressure... Covington is going to have to be so technically sound because I feel like if Masvidal starts to get, you know, a little dirty with his like dirty boxing and like sure. moving his feet a lot and just kind of challenging Covington's space, right. that's when Covington is going to get in trouble. Now, when it comes to after the fight, and I'm saying this right now, Masvidal is going to win. I'm saying it right now. Yes. If Let's he, go, when it comes to after the fight, okay. I, for a while, I was saying, oh, this is all for show. They're going to shake hands after, and they're going to be fine. No. These two f***ing hate each other. Absolutely hate each other. And after watching their latest press conference, 
I was sh- I was shook a little bit on how much they actually hate each other. Like this, it's getting to a point where it's like a little scary, you know. Like Masvidal was saying how um, people have been calling him, giving him like the location of where Covington has been hanging yeah. out, yeah. and like, yo, can I get the green light? Like, yeah. that's kind of scary. But I mean, Covington doesn't really seem to care all that much. Um, so as far as after the fight. I have a feeling one of them is going to want a rematch or Ooh. one of them is just going to continue running their mouth. But either way, I don't think this is the end of Masvidal and Covington. For one, I'm so happy you said that. I, I've talked to so many people behind the scenes, on the scenes, on podcasts, off podcasts, fighters, media members. I've never heard that yet. So I'm super happy and intrigued. And to be really honest, I like it. I like that yeah. a lot. Like, it's such a good rivalry. Whoever loses, uh, whoever taps out, whoever gets split decision, unanimous decision, knocked out, whatever happens, the other person can be like, no, no, I had a bad night. My calf was hurt. I want a rematch. So, 100%. Wow, I never heard that. I like because that. Because let's think about all of this bad blood that has been boiling for, right. for however long, right? Whoever yeah. loses is not going to take that very well. Right. They're not just going to be able to like, okay, yep, you won. Good job. On to yeah, the next. Yeah. Hell no. As, honestly, especially, I think, if Covington loses. If Covington loses, I do not see him being okay with this. And Masvidal, same thing. I just don't see them being able to take this L and being able to move on efficiently, you know? Yeah, um, I, yeah, I just I don't it, think this is the end. Like, real quick, and then, like, the first half that you, you were saying about uh, them communicating through the press and the little kind of press conference they have, we're going to – we're, we're literally hours away from like the big, big one. Um, the one thing I'm just like, I, you know, I love it. There's nothing like what we do and we can talk about it and we can have an extra show. We can have an extra podcast. Maybe we'll get an extra sponsor because we're doing this. So like, I always love all this build up to the fight. It's phenomenal. I think I deep down inside Chael Sonnen said this multiple times. He likes this week, the build up probably even better than Saturday night at 1 20 AM <laughs> Eastern time. It, that, that's what, it's the game, right? Right. But if I could say, if I could throw this out here, when even Usman and Masvidal was going through this, you know, war that they went on a year ago, maybe I shouldn't say that word with the kind of the what we're going through in life, in real life, but with this bad blood, right? Usman never said anything about Masvidal's family, and Masvidal never said anything about Usman and his beautiful daughter or daughters. Um, like it's always been, hey, I'm gonna get you in the cage. I think you're right. a bad champion. I think you're slow. I think you're overhyped. I think you're a journeyman. Whatever the words are. I don't understand why Covington is getting so, um, you know, so, so personal, personal, personal. right. And yeah. you know this and hey, well, now you're a married woman. And once in a while, if, uh, you know, Ross doesn't put the laundry the right way, you'll snap real quick for two or three seconds. But then you'll, you, I, trust me, I've been married long, so I know. <laughs> like, you just think that after a while it will get unper, like, it just like, He's, I feel like he's insecure about this fight or he's, 100%. Right? Like he's, he's not thinking clearly. Like no one, Covington's never talked like this three fights ago to about, you know, Damian Maya or T. Woodley. Like it would never went this way. So there's some reason and everyone's on Covington and everyone's picking him and he's the bet in favor and I get it. But for some reason, I think he's getting so personal because he's so insecure about this matchup. That's my You nailed seconds. it. You absolutely okay. nailed it. I don't agree with you always, but I'll agree with you on this one. And I think his insecurity is like shining so bright right now, especially when he gets a hot mic. It's never about talent. It's never about, I'm going to do this to you in the cage. This is how I'm going to win. It immediately goes to, you're a shit person. You're a terrible father. You're a terrible husband or boyfriend or whatever he is. And it's never about the game ever right, so right. that is the definition of somebody who doesn't have a belief in themselves who doesn't have a belief in their skill sets so they're gonna attack their opponent try to undermine them try to get under their skin in hopes that they can win that mental game because right. they're not sat they're not they're not trusting in their physical game mm-hmm. you know yeah. so that's why my money's on masvidal because masvidal is it. going in there like yo you talked about my girl you talked yeah. about my kids yeah. you talked about my family it's on you yeah. know yeah so i think covington is scared shitless and what i said to felicia about it, and she kind of agreed there's just some guys in the fight game that 
you just don't poke the bear. There's just some guys. Habib Nurmagomedov yes. was the same way. He he's great enough and good enough. And we think you know not think I know. And I I talked to people around Tuesday, Wednesday night behind the scenes about with on the Masvidal thing. He you he. Masvidal is even saying he's crossed the line. Like he's went too far. And now yeah. like, this isn't about a fight. Like I don't want to just win. Like I don't, if I got him in a Dar's choke and he's almost out, like, I don't want to end it that way. Like I want to do worse. And he just seems like, and I, I know Masvidal. I talked to him plenty of times. Great guy. Like he's just, he's not a guy that I would cross. I, I'm just going <laughs> to say like that. He's just, a, he, you just, you don't want to poke that bear. Yeah. Um, and then you said something about you don't want to agree. That's what makes it, Maddie. That's why we're, we're peanut butter and jelly. That's why it tastes so good together. That's what, it's different. I love that sometimes we don't agree. So that's awesome. Um, okay. So we agree on Jorge winning. I do want to kind of slide down. There's a couple more fights I definitely want to get into. But real quick afterwards, and I know you said the you think it's going to be a rematch. Um, it, so that's where you're going. Whatever, whoever wins or loses, you think you know, in summer, let's just say late summer, you think Covington Mazadal too is on the horizon. I do. I'm calling okay. it right now. Dana okay. White, send me my check. Dude, Natty, oh, unbelievable. Killed that one. All right. Um, co-main event, a new co-main event right now. Yeah. Real quick, are you less intrigued with it or do you, is it different and more intrigued with this co-main event now with Mokiano getting up in, in perceived spot? I'm intrigued only because I respect Moicano for being able to go in there and be like, yes, I want this fight. You know, like he's not, he could have easily just stayed quiet and been like, oh, I wonder what they're going to do. But no, he was on Twitter. He was like, give me this fight. Um, I'm still curious to know what happened with Makachev because he wanted this fight. And then all of a sudden he didn't want it. And I'm like, what what you doing there? Um, So I don't know what, I'm curious to hear that story. But uh, I digress. I think this is going to be. Oh, just real quick. Let me butt in on the on the Michael Chip thing. I would think, and just kind of some knowing little stuff and just knowing the game, he it, for him to risk everything. Like he's on this run. Some people are arguing that if something happens with Gaethje or Oliveira in the next two three months, he gets that spot. Or you know, I know Dana White saying maybe he has to fight Benny Darush in the summer too. That's been kind of coming out. But for him to risk everything, that spot, maybe one fight away spot, and I think he feels really good about the Benny Darush fight, to kind of have, you know, he fought last week, and I know he, you know, beat Bobby He's Green on a high. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he, the weight cut's bad for him. The weight cut is what hurts Islam, uh, Islam Makhlchev. So he weight cut, he got back up. Now to weight cut again literally the next week, who knows? Like, he's never done that. And imagine, and our, like, people are overlooking RDA. Oh, my goodness. The guy was an ex-champion. He's yeah. lost to guys like Usman. He's guys, you know, he's lost to. He's you know, fought everybody. Covington, like, but he's beaten Neil. Ma- he's beaten so many great guys. I think it was a harder fight than what people were giving him credit for. And I don't think people were giving uh, Michael Chef the credit if he would have came in and beat RDA. So I think yeah. it was like a lose lose. It was like, too risky. Yeah. Yep. Too risky. Yep. Yeah. But you got to give it to Moicano for stepping up, yeah. I think. Um, you know, RDA is obviously going to bring the pace. He's going to – he has conditioning. He has that fight in him. And he's he's the flashier striker, I would say. Um, but Moicano uses his striking to set up takedowns, which is interesting because they're both black belts in jiu-jitsu. They're both great on the ground. So – that's why Moicano, I think, is going to have a really tough time figuring out his ranges and what he wants to do on his feet. Because usually when he's on his feet, he's really trying to get on the ground. Right. Um, but RDA is comfortable in a lot of different situations. I think he has more in his toolbox for this fight. Okay. Um, granted, he does have the longer layoff. So you always have to ask yourself, okay, is there cage rust? Is that a thing? Um, but then again, this is Moicano's quickest turnaround. So is he tired? We don't know. Right. Um, and this is the first Southpaw he's ever fought or encountered in the UFC. So that changes everything on the feed as well. Um, my money is going to RDA. Um, I think, I think this is going to be his night. I know he's been struggling a bit, but I think this is going to be his night. I love it. I'm, uh, I'm kind of with you hundred percent. You, you nailed that one. So we're going to slide through. I know time is money and money is time. So here we go. <laughs> uh, Barbosa and Bryce Mitchell, right? <laughs> exactly. This is probably my, maybe my second favorite maybe my third favorite fight on the whole car there's one prelim that i absolutely love and i think you love too it's actually one of our fans questions so we'll get to that in a second i love this matchup bryce mitchell undefeated the camo shorts there's a lot of like yes with the camo shorts jeez also the savvy veteran he's fought habib Ramagomedov. he's fought justin gage he's fought paul felder he's fought so many of the greats 
Uh, Barbosa is the underdog. I like Edson Barbosa a little bit in this spot. How about you? What do you think about this fight? This one's going to be very interesting. Um, you know, it's wrestler versus striker, which is always, you know, it's really who can implement their game the best, right? And I think Mitchell, if he is able to get it to the canvas, then Barbosa is in a lot of trouble. Um, right. But it's a matter of getting him down, um, I think, is the issue here. I think, you know, Barboza needs to obviously keep it standing. Yep. Um, yeah, and yeah, if he's yeah. able to do that, I think this is a walk in the park for him. Um, but if Mitchell is able to force his opponent to play his game, which he is very good at, I think Barboza is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Now, I love Bryce Mitchell. I think he's just fun to follow. He's a great rapper, you know, <laughs> he's doing his thing, yeah, yeah. but I'm going to give it to Barboza for this one. I'm with you. I'm agreeing. We're, we're, we're three spot on. Ah, ah. We're three and three. Love it's, it. it's rock, paper, scissors. We're just throwing rocks right now. We're just we're telling <laughs> we're winning. So I like it. Um, all right. Next one, Kevin Holland's first fight as a welterweight. He was a middleweight. He had a great 2020, went four and oh, kind of was one of the arguments of fighter of the year. Had a bad 2021, uh, fought yeah. really high level guys, high level wrestlers, probably, you know, middleweights come in at 210 pounds. They go down to 185 and Kevin Holland soaking wet after eating a pizza is 183 pounds. So there was a big difference there. Walter is probably where he should be at. Uh, to me, this is a huge, I don't know, like I, I like the fight for Holland to see where he's at Walter Wade, you know, and Charles, um, not Charles Oliveira, Alex Oliveira, you know, the cowboy Hell of a career and no shade to him, but it just seems like there's a level, you know, per, yeah. you know, difference here. I like Kevin Holland a lot in this fight, especially moving down to Walter. I think this is a, a limelight spot. I think the UFC is like, hey, guys, don't forget about Kevin Holland. Let's give him a yeah. nice win here on a huge pay-per-view spot. I like Kevin Holland a, a lot immensely. Felicia Spencer picked him as his her absolute lock of the card. So I like Kevin Ooh, Holland. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. I mean, they're both in a bit of a slump, right? Yeah. Um, but I think it's safe to say that Kevin Holland moving down a weight class is going to be a huge advantage. I think he's about to find his new home. Um, and let's talk about the fact that he has an 81 inch reach. What? Like I'm not 81 inches. I feel like I'm barely 81 inches. Okay. <laughs> like that is, that is crazy. Being on the opposite side of that, that's yeah. nuts. Okay. So obviously he's going to use his range to his advantage. Um, and he's putting middleweights to sleep. So I have a feeling he'll be able to do it with a welterweight, you know? Um, but Oliveira does have a lot of weapons. He's willing to take a lot of risks. But when you take a lot of risks, you take a lot of payment. And that's what Kevin Holland can do with his range. Right. So, right. again, I agree with you. I'm giving it to Holland. Wow. Four for four. And We're how tall it. are you, by the way? I am 5'2 on a good day. <laughs> all right. 5'2 on a good day. All right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Um, all right, last one on the main card, and we'll roll on. Like I said, but there's a couple of questions, a couple that we kind of already answered, but we'll just run through. And like I said, we'll run uh, UFC 272 preview, Maddie Levine. Um, all right, Greg Hardy, heavyweight. I think it's the only heavyweight on the card. Uh, yep. This is sick of it's. Um, I think he Hardy is the underdog as well. I listened to uh, Aaron the Dog had a great betting show underneath the Fight Bananas banner, and um, it was total disagreement. There's like, there's no. And also, too, Greg Hardy, of course, is a very, um, you know, loud or very, uh, you know, cultural. Just that it's, he's, he's one of those guys. There's not a lot of middle ground. You like him or you can see what he does inside the octagon or you just, you know, you're not a fan right away. And I get a lot of that, too. And a lot of people aren't. So but Greg Hardy, a lot of people think he's going to knock him out. He's going to win this fight pretty easily. And then a lot of people are like, no, speak of is the favorite. Uh, he's been there before. He's going to get Hardy on the ground. Car Greg Hardy doesn't have good cardio. Um, I think I might go with Greg Hardy. I think he's actually going to get off this run. If you guys remember, he when he fought Ty Tuivasa four or five months ago, he was winning that fight. Like he knocked Ty almost loose. Ty is just, uh, you know, he's literally the Incredible Hulk, and he came back to win that fight. But I think Greg Hardy's actually going to win this fight to start off the night. How about you? I don't like him. Okay, I, I respect that. I, I don't so like respect him. that. Love it. <laughs> I All right. just don't like him. I respect There's it. just something about his, I don't know if it's his style or the way that he holds himself, but I just feel like he is in there guessing. All the yeah, time. Really. I feel like there's no game plan. I feel like he's going in there and he's like, I'm a heavyweight. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. There's something about him where I feel like he needs to work on his fight IQ just a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, he's certainly done 
he's had he has great wins under his belt, but I just I don't know. I think the way that Sergey can chain together takedown attempts and you know, if he can get in that top position, I think it's gonna oh, be yeah. really, really hard. You know, Hardy is able to make it hard for people to take him down. But once he's down, done. Done. You know, yeah. so I think Hardy's gonna get tired. I agree with that statement. Um okay. if he if Sergey can get it into at least the second round, the yeah. chances of him winning pff, skyrocket. Yeah. So Sergey. I'm gonna go with Sergey just because I don't like Greg Hardy. <laughs> I, I respect it. I like it. Okay. I like it a lot. All right. So we put it on our Fight Bananas Instagram stories. Uh, ask Maddie anything about UFC 272. So there's four, five, six questions here, and we'll, cool. we'll run them. All right. Let's do it. Um, first one, I think we kind of answered already. Who, who do you like in the co-main event? You said RDA, right? Yes, we're going with RDA on that one for sure. Uh, uh, does Mokiano have the best tattoos in the UFC? <laughs> um, he's certainly up there. I appreciate uh, a gentleman with a lot of tattoos. As far as the best, though, yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I so he's you know he's a little new to the game, but Randy Costa has Ooh. a bunch of tattoos, and they're like really well done. Yeah. And I would say you know his tattoos are up there. So. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say no. Moicano does not have the best in the game. Wow. I'm trying to think. I'm Nothing's really coming to mind for best tattoos. Like, a lot uh, of bad ones are coming to mind, oh, but um, yeah, yeah. as far we as the a, best ones. Yeah. I, a month from now, uh, Maddie and Dave coming back. Next show is going to be a top 10 worst tattoos uh, in the fight game. <laughs> I love or, it. That, I'm here for that. Um, what is Maddie's favorite all-time fight card? Ooh. Good hmm. question, right? My favorite all-time fight card would probably be any card with Valentina Shevchenko on it. I love Valentina Shevchenko so much. And I think when she fought Jessica I, it was like, oh, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Again, not the yeah. biggest fan of Jessica I, but you got to give it to her. She's done her thing. She's made a name for herself. But Valentina Shevchenko is on another King level like yeah. that girl is so good so i would have to say that's probably one of my more favorite cards and then you know anytime conor mcgregor's on the card it's always exciting to watch but sure. um i give it to shevchenko you're, you are you super excited about that ufc 275 her versus santos that matchup that just i thought made? i thought the matchup was interesting i i didn't expect it to be santos but again yeah, that again but then again She's kind of lined up everybody and shot them down. Um, right, so right. it's, it's like a new matchup. It's it's unique. It's I'll a give fresh that. face. It's, it's a fresh yeah. face for her. It's somebody yeah. who's extremely talented. Um, but I really don't think that anybody can ever beat Shevchenko. And I'll say it right here: I thought she beat Nunes. I did once or twice. 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 I did. <laughs> Maybe once. Maybe right, once. Right, there was one. Right, right. I'll, I'll I'll say one and one because one yeah. of the fights that I'm thinking of, I can't remember which one was first. She definitely won. So okay. unpopular right. opinion. Don't care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, two more last. Um, how much would a game bread win shake up things in the welterweight division? I don't know if shaking up is the right word. Um, I agree with that. Like I think people are forgetting how talented this dude is like i understand that he what is he like number six or something like that yeah he's um, number six and like leon's next for uh, if, any, if anything you know sh shaking up if anything it's making it more exciting because yeah. i think that means that we'll see game bread more often and we'll see him being chosen for more cards and more because once you climb the ranks you're the people you're the one that people are chasing right, right so i right. think the viewers benefit more over game bread winning yeah. um but as far as shaking it up i'm not i don't really view it as a shake up i view it as something that the division needs honestly yeah, uh, and uh, they finally made Chemayev and Burns a totally official. That's next month in Jacksonville. And, like, the winner of that, I would assume, especially if Chemayev, he's going to have so much buzz and steam around him. I think Chemayev will be next for Usman. So, like, to me, the the year of Usman is kind of laid out. Um, even mm -hmm. if it Burns again, if Burns beats Chemayev, he gets all that buzz and maybe one last rematch for Usman. So, I don't know. I think – it's so weird. I never thought about it. I really thought I said this um, just a little while ago. 
to me, I was I predicted game bread will fight win or lose against Covington. I thought Diaz or Connor was next. I think one humongous fight was next for game bread. Man, I really like the rematch. I'm I you know, I know. I'm so Who happy knows? I came up with that idea. <laughs> oh yeah. Um I don't know if it would be a turnaround rematch because I do like the idea of Jorge fighting Connor. Yeah. Um it's gotta happen, right? Yeah, it has it's to gotta happen. I don't necessarily agree with Connor just coming in and getting a title fight. That's to me, that's kind of messed up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it shakes things up. I think it makes it exciting. I agree. All right. Last one for you. And we'll let you run. And we kind of talked about it before we hit the record button. So uh, what's your favorite prelim match on UFC 272? Okay. Let me, let me scroll through this bad boy. So there's actually a couple that I like, but the one that caught my attention first was Marina Rodriguez versus Jan yeah. Zianan. I think that's going to be fireworks and yeah. that's straw, straw weight, right? Um, yes. Yeah. Straw weight. So, yep. I mean, you know, I used to be a straw weight myself, so I'm always, um, looking into that division and I think Rodriguez is on the rise, but so, it, you know, so is, so is Jan. So it's like, I think it, whoever can implement their game plan better, but this is one of those things where it's like, they're both incredible strikers yeah. and fans love brawls. They yeah. love when they go all out. And I feel like we would get that out of those ladies. And I think that's the perfect fight. I almost wish it was like the main event for the prelims, because I feel like this is going to be the perfect fight to set up a really exciting main card. Um, so I think that one's, that's uh, that's my pick for the, uh, the prelim. I wish that car. I would. I'm such a big uh, Marina Rodriguez fan. I wish it was yeah. actually the first fight of the pay per view. Yeah, um, I would love a female fight on the pay per view, and Same. I think it would set up the whole night. I think I agree. I think that's kind of got like fight of the night written all over. I think for 15 yeah. minutes they're going to go at it, kind of like we just saw last weekend of Priscilla and uh, Nan. Um, also, to another little baby sleeper. Same thing. Another female fight, and this is a flyweight with uh, Moroz versus uh, Maria Gapapova. Agapapova, uh, I know people kind of like don't like hearing this sometimes. She does have championship ceiling. Like she could be the best flyweight in the world one day. She's that talented and just mm -hmm. that unique and different and long and strange and lefty. Strange. She's got a lot of like, uh, you know, really unique qualities, great qualities. So I'm intrigued to see that one. That's a really good fight. Really good fight. I think that one's going to be good too. I think that's, I think that's their uh, spot in the lineup I think is perfect. Nice. I First like five of the night. I think it's going to be a great way to get things going. There we go. Wow. UFC 272. We're almost there. Look at that. We're almost there. We're like hours away. Uh, well, let's go. So, so before before we go, I heard that they were considering putting the BMF belt on the line. Do we know if this is happening? No, it's not happening. It's not. Yeah. Happening. Like, for one, Dana White's on Pat McAfee. So anything that Pat McAfee says, like, it's so good and gold, you just agree and laugh and have fun. They probably, like... Uh, maybe drank or smoked something before they went uh, yeah. on set. So, you know, and you, like, you, know you know what we should do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What are these purple things here? That, you know, um, so, you know, they probably had some fun or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it's too late, too. It's like we're we're hours away. We're right. I, mean, I think I ordered it already on ESPN Plus. Like, there's, there's no <laughs> like we're ready to go. Like, yeah, let's do this. Not. I'm so excited. Um, very last question. We're letting you run. What are you eating Saturday night? What am I eating? Yeah, where what's what, what are you snacking on Saturday night oh, to watch the, the show? That's a great question. Um, because to be honest, I might be fighting soon, so I have to be careful of what I'm eating. Um, and to be fair, kickboxer, not an MMA fighter. Please don't right, resonate. Right. I saw that, but I thought that was a little bit away, wasn't it? Or no? Um, so I was supposed to fight in March, but they couldn't find an opponent for me. So I said, you know what? Let's fight in April, and I'll okay. give me more time to fight. Whatever. Okay. Um. But as far as what I'm probably going to eat, it's probably going to be tacos because I love me some tacos, maybe some yes. margaritas. Yes. Um, you know, really yeah. anything. <laughs> anything anything is on the table. <laughs> I love it. Guys, UFC 272 preview. It's in the books. I'm done talking about it. I've talked about it enough. This is the end of the week for me. Yep. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the fights. Maddie, you're the absolute best. I hope everyone, hey guys, go subscribe. Like, where's the, I'm gonna put the YouTube link here or there. Yes. We'll make a post, a screenshot. Go Let's subscribe. be friends. And uh, say hi to Ross for me, by the way, dude. I will. Like that I will follow Ross Turbo Levine. He's gonna be the future karate combat champion. I'm saying it right now. I love it. I like that guy a lot. Maddie, have a great day. Have a good night.